All right, a time's now. Hi, everybody. This is a deep dive to Drupal 11, what's new, how to prepare. I'm entirely surprised that so many of you are here. Really? Like, who wants to talk about Drupal 11 after Starshot? It's like, whatever, Drupal 11. Um, but we will cover Starshot as well. Who's here for the stickers? All right, a few of you. Okay, maybe the content will also be interesting. We'll see. But I have stickers like that, uh, almost 200, not more, so limited edition, but also some are available still, so you can get some uh, after the talk. Uh, so these slides are open source. Um, I have this tradition of having these state of Drupal number talks at different events, and I create them open source so you can uh, present these as other events. Um, you can bring them anywhere and like just spread the news and spread the know-how. So these are open source. And I'm Gabor Hoichi. I, my made up title is full stack community organizer, which is strange, but I do a lot of different things. So I maintain modules like upgrade status and the translation template extractor and a bunch of stuff for the eco, like helping the ecosystem work better. I also commit stuff to core sometimes. I review, core, you review stuff and get stuff into core. I also maintain social media for separate initiatives. I help run initiative meetings. I make the connections between events and initiatives. So I work on the contribution events here. I work on making sure that events have buffs and they're in sessions. I create demo videos. You may have heard my voice say, Starlight accents <laughs> in the Dries note. Um, so I create videos of things so that people get excited. Um, I go into like argue to do those kind of things. And uh, yeah, I do developer marketing and like it's a full stack community organizer basically. So I try to think of myself as being the soil of trying to help other people grow. I think there's a lot of people in this community that are amazing technically. They can do a lot of amazing technical things. So if we can support them to involve more people and bring their technology to life, then everybody wins. So that's what I do since uh, 2003, 21 years. Uh, but who are you? So any of you are new to Drupal, hands up. All right, great, two of you, great. Uh, who is using Drupal 10? Whoa, all right, who's using Drupal 9? Great, still like a third of the room. It's end of life. Um, who's using Drupal 8? Also end of life. Who's using Drupal 7? All right, one third of the room, perfect. Not yet end of life. Um, who's using earlier Drupal versions? I'm, I have a Drupal 6 somewhere, it's fun. Yeah, 6 is great. You install it, it's blazing fast. You will never believe like, wow, so great. So yeah, uh, great. So a lot of you, most of you are Drupal 10, um, and some of you are Drupal 9, and a third of you are Drupal 7. So we'll talk about how to get on from Drupal 10 to 11, what it means for you, what, it mean, what Drupal 11 means for Drupal 10, what it means for Drupal 7. Uh, it's gonna be great, so we have a great audience. So we'll see why Drupal 11, what's there, and what the tools are upgrading, uh, but we can't escape. Starshot, but Starshot, like why are we here if there's Starshot? Like is Starshot a new thing? Is Starshot based on Drupal? Like is it on Drupal 11? Like what's Starshot? So let's talk about that. So Starshot, the prototype that we did and the way that we envision building it this year is that we'll be built on Drupal core. So we need Drupal core, so we will need Drupal 11. Um, to, be, to base it off of. And then I think the history of these initiatives is quite interesting to understand how we arrived at Starshot and why Drupal Core is still very important in Starshot. So first, uh, we've seen that the existing Drupal users complain that it's hard to keep Drupal up to date. So we were like, okay, let's work on updating stuff automatically so that it's easy to maintain your Drupal site. So we started working on automatic updates and part of automatic updates is package manager, which is an API for composers, so it helps you manage your stuff um, that then automatically could be updated. So we were like, okay, that helps maintain your existing site and keep it up to date. But how do you grow your Drupal site? So we were like, okay, 
we need a way to grow your Drupal site. So find projects from Drupal.org. So we were like, let's start project browsers. Going to find projects from the Drupal ecosystem because it's amazing. There's a lot of projects. So project browser will help you find your projects. But now you install five-star module. But how the hell can you get a widget somewhere that makes people vote? So that's a learning curve. So we were like, OK. Let's figure out something that allows us to package these projects in a way that provide features, that provide actually working things, that combine different components and makes them available. So that's where we were like, we need to build recipes. And then we realized that recipes will be these components of like voting recipe, event recipe, blog recipe, e-commerce recipe, and they need to be combinable. And there's a lot of things that you would need on a Drupal site by default. So we said we need this recipe baseline, a CMS recipe baseline, and that's the very blunt technical term for Starshot, is to build a set of recipes that provide a new baseline for Drupal, where we start on the 10th floor instead of starting on the ground floor with Drupal. So the role of Drupal Core here is to bring the stability that it, that it was always bringing to the table. It's stable, it's reliable, it's supported for several years, et cetera, et cetera, and then there's all of these layers that allow us to build Starshot because we, have, we could have the recipes that provide these feature sets. We can combine in the default set of recipes. And we have Project Browser that will allow you to add more on top of this component recipes like blog and voting and e-commerce, et cetera. And we have Automatic Update slash Package Manager that allow us to pull down the things that are needed for these recipes. So the Package Manager as a Composer API will allow Project Browser to compose the things from these recipes. And that's all built on Drupal Core. So that's why Drupal Core is very important, because we will not be able to do anything without that. So we're not abandoning Drupal Core. We are embracing the strengths of Drupal Core. But we are actually making Drupal, Drupal Core smaller. We'll talk about what we do in Drupal 11 to make it even smaller. And at the same time, we are expanding Drupal to be even bigger and even more useful as a starting point. So this is how Drupal Core and Starshot relate to each other. And we are building Starshot because all of these components, we need them to build Starshot. But the eventual idea is that we'll have a Starshot, capable, Starshot capabilities in Drupal Core. So we will have automatic updates, package manager, project browser, recipe capability, all of them in Drupal Core. And then Drupal Core default install will be able to offer you up the Starshot recipe and install it remotely, and then all of the add-on recipes as well. So the, in the eventual future state of Starshot is that Drupal Core will be Starshot in a way that it will have the features to be able to install Star, the Starshot components, but it will not be Starshot in a way that we will not add all of the modules and themes and everything into Drupal Core, because that's not what we want to do. We want to make Drupal Core capable of being this composable core system that's very stable and very reliable, and then use that composable stable system to build this fantastic composable thing. So that's the idea with Starshot, and that's why Drupal Core will have an even more of a role in building Starshot in the future. But because we are not there yet, we don't have those components. Now, currently, we have Starshot as a separate package of these things that includes Drupal Core and these components, so we can accelerate that uh, process right now. So that's where Drupal Core and Starshot relate and fit in. So some Starshot features will become core. So for example, when we have a foundational thing that we need, where the, that the Drupal community builds an ecosystem around, let's say Experience Builder, and we want that to be in core because that's going to have a big ecosystem. But if we have a thing that's more swappable, replaceable, and it's not other people don't necessarily build on top of it, like a voting system, whatever, we're not going to put that in core because we can have it much more uh, agile in contrib. They can change much easily. We can swap the component out with a different component if we believe we have a better one. Um, so we don't need to put everything in core. I think the old model was that Dries would come on stage and he's like, we're going to put all of this stuff in core. It's going to be great. And the new model is, core is great that it's small. It's amazing that it's stable because it provides us this foundation. Core needs to be able to be this engine of allowing us to do these components. And then we can 
do the components that we want to have ecosystems on in core and the components that we, we are fine with having in contrib, keeping contrib. So that's the idea. And Starshot will possibly be built on top of uh, Drupal 11 uh, because Drupal 11 is almost here, as you'll see soon. Um, it depends on all the availability of all of the components, et cetera, and how far we can get with Starshot in time. Dries would really like to show something about Starshot in Barcelona in so end of September. So it, it's a very accelerated timeline. We'll see where we can get. All right. So the next question is why do we have Drupal 11? Who's feeling like Drupal 11 is too early? Just knock up on us and it's already here. Not too many of you actually. All right, I was expecting like we are stressed because we just got updated to Drupal 10 and now it's Drupal 11, like why? <laughs> so, so, good news. So Drupal 11 is early so you don't need to upgrade to it. So, and that's kind of a controversial statement maybe, but that's why. So with the previous major versions of Drupal, we were kind of forced by our dependencies to release them because Symfony was EOL, CK Editor was EOL. Major components of Drupal was EO, were EOL. You have to get the captions working because it's been requested specifically. All right. They want me to stop and figure out captioning. So we'll get back to this while, while, while I figure out captioning here. I can entertain you while they are figuring this out. <laughs> yeah, we can talk about other things. Yes? Uh, when will uh, uh, Drupal 11 be ready to start using? Yeah, I will cover when will Drupal 11 be ready was the question. We will cover that in the session and because we want to have it in the recording with subtitles, which are very important, but I haven't arrived on time to configure everything. That's my fault, not, not anyone else's. Um, we didn't have them, but we'll figure it out. So um, who recently upgraded to Drupal 10? There's a lot of you. All right, so that's a, that was a better question than my previous one. So that's why it's important that you can keep being on Drupal 10, and we'll see if I can get back to that content later. Who of you started with Drupal 7 or earlier? Almost all the audience, wow. So this is an interesting conference. When Dries, uh, the Dries note asked for people to stand up and say if they have, are here with for this many years, that many years, I was surprised because usually the stats from DrupalCon is like half of the people are new to the uh, conference or they've been sent by their employees and they're new and this conference is very different than that. Just super interesting to see all of the, all of the faces and then, then see how this is gonna happen. It's cool, all right. So I started with Drupal 4.3. And I like Drupal 4.3 because the admin interface was different from the front end interface. There was an admin.php and an index.php. And then one month into my using of Drupal, they merged the two things and it became one interface. I was not happy. But, uh, but the fun thing in, in Drupal, I think, is that even then, all the basics were there. So the, the content structuring system was there. CCK, cut, like fieldable entities were not there, but the node system was there and you can have different components and the aggregator module was amazing because we can, so I used it for a web developer community site and we could aggregate a lot of things there and promote news and stuff like that. And Drupal was really capable there. And I think what I like about the direction that the project is heading right now is that we can unlock a lot of these capabilities that are super unique in Drupal and bring it to a much wider market. How are you with my closed captioning? Not there yet. Should I figure out, all right. I will make it public right after, yeah. It, it had the Starshot content, so I wasn't really, sh I didn't want to make it public before yesterday, and I haven't gotten around to make it public, but it's a checkbox that I can make once we are done. Uh, and then you can present it anywhere, and it will have all the speaker notes and everything. So what I'm really excited about the, f the future here, including Drupal 11 and where it's headed, is because we can bring all of these capabilities to more people. So I think we had the buff on Drupal 11 yesterday, and there was a good turnout, and we talked about Drupal 11 for 10 minutes, and then Starshot and automatic updates for 20 minutes. 
And then Matt Glamen had, I think, a good observation that it's great because we're, we, are, we like, talk about it and we're not concerned about it so much anymore because it's fine, it's, we know it's gonna be fine. And Drupal 12 is gonna be even easier once I get back control of my slides. <laughs> I can tell you about that, but I don't want to, I don't want to rob our recording of that information. So, um, so, uh, one, so yeah, so it will be even easier. And so it was interesting because we talked about 10 minutes about Drupal 11, and then we talked about all the other things because it will be just a, a, one of the components that just works well and we don't need to be afraid of them. How's it going? Our audience is writing for you. Make it happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it didn't turn on. Yep. Do you know what the launch button for Starshot will do? So the question is, yeah, what's the launch button for Starshot will do? I've heard a lot of conspiracy theories about that. <laughs> I don't think the DA will run a, a SaaS product. I don't think. Uh, I haven't been in any discussions there. I think what the launch button on Starshot may do is that it may launch a WebAssembly-based environment. So I don't know if any of you tried uh, WordPress Playground. Super cool. It's actually based on a Drupal experiment that we used to do, but then we stopped doing it. Um, and they took it and they made it much better. Credit to them, it's amazing. So WordPress Playground basically <laughs> runs WordPress with SQLite in your browser without a web server. So it's like runs locally in your browser. And you can install WordPress and use it and try it out and do everything and then export it and host it somewhere. So, and that would be possible with Drupal because we have the quick start command in Drupal core. How, how many of you know the quick start command? Not many of you. All right, so quick start is a, is a command line tool in Drupal. You run core slash script slash Drupal and give it the quick start argument and then it launches a web server for you with SQLite with only PHP, you don't need to have like Docker or DDEV or MySQL or any of those things. You just need PHP. And you already have PHP because you used Composer to get Drupal in the first place. So you have PHP and you don't need anything else. It runs a browser with SQLite. It runs a web server with SQLite and then you can use Drupal in your browser. So that's fun. And the next step would be to put it in the browser, the whole thing, and then run it there. So I think Drupal would be capable of that. Uh, the other option, I think, for the launch button is to partner with um, ephemeral, uh, with a company that does ephemeral environments. For example, Tugboat would be a great partner for that. Okay, I, I, say, I said it now, it's in the recording. Um, I don't know if that's gonna happen, so that's an option as well. I don't think that the DA will run a SAS product. I don't think that the DA will pick one specific vendor to be behind the launch button. That would be controversial, super controversial but I'm not on the DA, so I'm not to say, that's my feeling. So are you still thinking that you will have something, or should I continue the session? Yes. So one thing I can promise is to make a recording of this next week with, cli with live captioning, if that's useful. Uh, and then we can serve this audience and then serve that audience and then everybody will be happy. What about that? Let's do that. You agree? Cool. All right, so Drupal 11 is early, so you can upgrade later. Once my slides go up, we can continue to talking about that. Um, right? And I'm not gonna fiddle with this anymore. So, um, because uh, Drupal 10 will be supported until mid-late 2026. So that's a long time. So previous Drupal versions, we were forced to upgrade to a new major version because our dependencies were EOL, as I said. But here, they are not. Uh, and it's our choice to release Drupal 11 early. It's our choice, finally. It's a new thing. 
And so we can do overlapping support. So Drupal 10 was released uh, December 2022. 11 is released the week of July 29. Yes. Thanks for the efforts of a lot of people. It's great. Drupal 12 is expected mid-late 2026. So that means that we will have Drupal 10.4 late this year. And that's going to be an LTS release, which means that it will not have disruptive changes in Drupal 10.4 anymore. It will have some backport, very few backported changes to support upgrading to Drupal 11. But it will not have disruptive changes anymore, like changing the field UI or stuff like that. So that's going to be LTS. And then Drupal 11, when that goes to LTS, is going to be mid-2026. So the Drupal 10 EOL in mid-late 2026 and the Drupal 11 EOL in mid-late 2029 would line up like this. And so if you look at this picture, that means that from Drupal 10 LTS, you will be able to move to Drupal 11 LTS uh, in two years' time, two years from now. So that means that in two years from now, Drupal 11 will be very stable. It will work out the issues. The ecosystem will be super stable. Will be all the modules be ported and even the obscure ones that you want to use. And there will be not many. There will be no disruptive changes left for new minor versions of Drupal uh, 11. So Drupal 11 will be as stable as 10.3 uh, will be later this year. There will not be a new field UI and other like big changes in uh, in Drupal core. So that means that you can hop from LTS to LTS. So similar to Ubuntu, if you used Ubuntu and did that. Um, so this means that you don't need to upgrade early. We'll have more time. And this also means that you can buy into the stability of this and not be that concerned about Drupal 11. So I'm kind of surprised you're all here. Now you can leave. <laughs> um, um, I give you 25 minutes back. Um, but that's that's I think that's a thing I think good news. So Drupal 11 is here, but you don't necessarily need to care about it at all. Uh, so that to work out, we need to release Drupal 11 this year because we want to innovate on top of Drupal 11. We want to support Drupal 11 long. So we need to use dependencies in Drupal 11 that are fresh and will be supported for a long time. So we need to release it now. So that it is dependent on the Symphony that will be supported for long. It's dependent on a jQuery that will be supported for long, et cetera. So it has components now that are fresh and will be supported for a long time. So that's why we are releasing it now. So the timeline, when will Drupal 11 be out? Uh, there's, there was an alpha one May 3rd, 2024. Uh, we wanted to release a beta around that time. We were not ready to release a beta around that time because we had some outstanding issues with PHP unit, PHP unit 10 compatibility, and we had some outstanding issues with database requirements and some other beta requirements. But those are now done. So uh, I consulted the release managers before I finalized the slides, and they confirmed that it's totally sure that there's going to be a beta release next week, week of May 13, 2024. If you want to help with the beta release, we, the writing of the release notes is an open source process. So even if you don't want to help with any code or can't help with any code, it's totally fine. We're writing the release notes on like what might break on this. You can try it out and see if something broke and then write uh, known issues and stuff like that. So we are release note writing is open source and the prepping for the beta is happening right now. We expect the beta on the week of July 1st, 2024 and the final release on the week of July 29, 2024, which is more like the first week of August. So it's if you start complaining in July that it's not there yet, it's maybe the first, I mean, this is Monday, and then the rest of the week is mostly August. So it's probably some, one of the first days of August that will be out. All right, so the timelines line up like this. So we have 10.3 is going to be released very soon. And then 10.4 will be end of year, and then there's a 10.5. So we call the 10.4 LTS but it's still only supported for one year, and then a 10.5 that will support it for a bit longer, but they don't have disruptive changes, so they are very similar to each other, 10.4 and 10.5. There's going to be the 11 versions go up to the middle of uh, 2026. I got, yeah, uh, and they go to LTS, and then that's when Drupal 12 comes out, and there's no promises of where Drupal uh, uh, 13 will be, but we have this our current cadence of every other year is what you should be sort of planning for in your head. 
And they have these LTS versions there that are starting when the new major version releases. The previous one goes to LTS. And LTS means that it's more stable. There's no disruptive changes anymore. And then you can hop from LTS to LTS. So the green, one, green LTS overlaps with the red LTS, overlaps with the blue LTS, et cetera. So that's the idea. And then the elephant in the room is Drupal 7 EOL is going to be uh, January 5th, uh, 2025. And so you will be able to move to Drupal 10 or Drupal 11 because we have Drupal 7 core migrations still included in Drupal 11, so you can hop from 10 to 11 right away in January. Ideally, the ecosystem of the modules will be there, so we'll cover that a bit later. I still have time for that, thankfully. And um, the core migrations will also be there. Uh, if you have struggled with migrations before, I highly suggest uh, the, boss of, uh, the session of my boss later today, and not just because he's my boss, but it's also a cool session, uh, because uh, Acquia built a product called Acquia Migra Migrate Accelerate, and then we fought long and hard to open source the whole thing, and now it's open source. So anybody can use Acquia Migrate Accelerate. It's a super fancy UI. Yes, thank you, Acquia. It's a super fancy UI on top of Migrate. Um, I used it to migrate my blog from Drupal 7. It was like a few months ago, still on Drupal 7. Uh, now it's on Drupal 10 uh, to uh, there. And super fancy UI. And what I like to say is it automates the finding the problems in your Drupal 7 because migrations usually run fine if the data is perfect. But the data is not perfect and the migrations break in obscure ways. And so Acquia Migrate Accelerate is, uh, is uh, finding problems accelerate or something like that. So uh, if it helps you fix your data in your Drupal 7, which, is took, which took me some time on my blog as well, even though it's just a blog, it had a lot of experiments that I did. And uh, once I fixed the data, it just ran fine. It's like smooth. It's very super. So you should go there. It's an open source thing. Helps with the upgrades. It's free. Let's talk about Drupal 11. So what's in Drupal 11? Um, we've, it's the same formula that we've been using before, so it's the same as in Drupal 10.3 because they come out around the same time, close to the same time. Uh, Drupal 11 has uh, deprecated parts removed and the system requirements updated. So it's cleaned up. So the way we build the new major versions in Drupal core is we keep adding things the, to the previous version. So Drupal 10 gets the new experimental navigation thing. Drupal 10 gets the new re recipes API, which was committed last night. I don't know if you've heard. Recipes in Drupal core already committed. Yes. Um, so we are adding them to Drupal 10. So you get all the features in Drupal 10, um, even in the LTS. And, um, uh, and what we do in Drupal 11 is we just clean out the things that we don't want to be there anymore. But the new things are already there in Drupal 10. So that's how we build new major versions. And we update the system requirements so we can rely on the base system requirements to be reliable for several years so that it's a stable platform. So the Drupal core improvements that will be there, there's a bunch of stuff that has been done by Drupal 10.2. There's a CK editor auto for, compared to Drupal 10, if you use 10.0 before. Compared to 10.0, we have CK editor auto formatting and single directory components as a stable um, system decoupled menus with a link set standard. We have a field UI that's revamped. It's much easier to reuse fields and much easier to configure fields. Uh, we have uh, floating bulk operations that makes it much easier to do bulk actions on things. It's a much better interaction. We have easier block management with creating custom blocks and placing custom block and uh, placing blocks on pages. We have big pipe interface previews, which is an API to create interface previews for parts of the page that are loaded later. We have performance improvements, which is another interesting area that you should go to Yanez's session and learn more about. We have project announcements, which brings Drupal news to Drupal sites. And then there's 10.3 that will come out soon, so that it has the new experimental navigation module, which was demoed in the Dries note. It has the experimental recipes API as of like 10 hours ago, pretty much. Um, uh, it has workspaces, table module, uh, amazing work. Uh, it's been a long time coming. It has a new access policy API, which came out of Pitchburg from last year. It's also great. Uh, and there's uh, taxonomy term revisions and moderation support, which allows you to bring that to content moderation and workspaces. So that's super cool as well. So that's all done. It will be in Drupal 11. 
And then there's more later. So Drupal 11 will release new things in future versions, like project browser, automatic updates, experience builder, and recipes improvements on top of what they already have. And this is usually the extent of what I've been talking about previous major versions, but now you know the elephant in the room is Starshot. So there's going to be, as I said, all the foundational components of Starshot that are required for the ecosystem will be in core. Starshot itself will not be in core. It's going to be a set of recipes that will be, live elsewhere and will be a combination of contributed projects and their configuration. But their foundational components in these things will be in Drupal core. The one in December? The one in December? 11.1 is in December, yes. So the good news with releasing in July, 11.0, is that we can release 11.1 already this year and uh, release some improvements. So the updated system requirements are MySQL slash Percona 8, uh, MariaDB Tantix, SQLite uh, 3.45, Postgres 16, PHP 3, and Composer 2.7. Um, I don't think that any of these are shocking to anyone. I wanted to highlight PHP 8.3 because that's a lot of fun. So, I'm, oh, that's like a bit broken animation. So, we have PHP 8. There's a performance test on kinsta.com. I don't know if you've seen that. They are testing systems all the time with new PHP versions. So, there's PHP 8.1 with 922 requests per second. A2 is 9.45. How many do you think PHP 8.3 would be with a Drupal 10.1, by the way, that's being tested? A thousand? Nine fifty? Four hundred? What? <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, and this is without us making any changes to Drupal. Like we didn't even make to any changes. So you install PHP eight point three on your existing Drupal ten site. It's going to be fifty percent faster than what you have right now. At least fifty percent faster if you don't have eight three already. So go home and install A3, like, yeah, you should do that. So it's not, you shouldn't install it because of Drupal 11, but because you, it's going to be faster. Your site will cost less to run, et cetera. It's just better. Also good for the environment. So, yeah. All right, there's dependencies that are updated. So I told you that we need to update dependencies because that ensures the longevity of Drupal core. So Drupal 11 will be based on Symfony 7. It's already based on Symfony 7. It's based on jQuery 4. Um, we would love to get more front-end people involved to modernize our JavaScript stack, but so far, so good. And it's based on PHP Unit 10. 10 is not the latest version of PHP Unit, unlike the rest of these. Uh, 11 is the latest version, but 10 was uh, uh, quite hard challenging to get onto 10 from 9. So that's why the beta was delayed. And uh, we plan to support PHP Unit 11 in future versions of Drupal 11, so likely we'll be able to run PHP Unit 10 and 11, but not 9. If you have tests, tests are possible to run on PHP Unit 9 and 10. The same test. You can run on both. But Drupal Core cannot run PHP Unit 9 and 10 at the, or support with the same code base both at the same time. So if you have a contributed project, you can update it to be compatible with Drupal 11 and still compatible with Drupal 10, but core could not be compatible with two PHP units. That's the distinction that you need to understand. And then Drupal core is getting smaller again, so we are re removing some of these things. Dries outlined a criteria in a couple of Dries notes back why we are doing this. So basically the modules that don't have an ecosystem in Contrib, they don't have things that build on top, and maybe have better solutions in Contrib, for example, the Actions UI, you may have heard of ECA. It's, kind of, it's been around the conference. Um, there's the book module, tracker, forum, statistics, tour. Some of these don't have better solutions in Contrib. Some of these are not high tech enough for the people that use them because like who wants a forum in 2024? And some of these are really cool to move to Contrib. For example, statistics. Uh, some people picked them up already and they want to build this very privacy conscious statistics solution out of it, which is super cool. So I think it is a power of liberating something from core and giving it to people that actually want to take care of it now. And statistics is an amazing example of that. So uh, it's great that core is getting smaller because we can pull these in from recipes. Um, and so they don't need to be in core and they can be better in con better developing contrib. So in the future, core's role is to be this very stable 
base system and Contrib can do the magic things, and then we can put the two together in Starshot and have feel the magic together. So how do you get on Drupal 11? So first you use upgrade status, amazing module, I maintain it, that's why it's amazing. Um, so, it, it would be amazing if I wouldn't maintain it, but it's great. So, upgrade status builds on top of the fantastic work by uh, Matt Gleman in PHP Stand Drupal and a bunch of other tools. So, this gives you a checklist of what you need to do. It gives you next steps for everything. It gives you like a pie chart of how ready you are, and then it gives you next steps and it congratulates you when you're done with something. It's great. It's like gamifying the whole upgrade process. It doesn't give you chocolate, but it's almost there. Um, so yeah, it gives you like a checklist of your environment if you're ready, and then for each project that you run, it uh, looks out if there's a module, of, if there's an update available on Drupal.org. If there's not, then it directs you to contribute to the module through the issue queue and help the community fix it. If you have a custom project, it runs the analysis tools on your custom projects and helps uh, fix the issues for you. And then it suggests you Drupal Rector, which is automatic, it's magically automatically fixing the issues as well. So if you have like those test methods, it's gonna fix this and it will leave to do comments there if there's something to consider for humans. So we have all of these automated super nicely. On Drupal.org, we have the project update bot that runs on every project. So it ran on more than 6,000 projects. It opened a lot of issues. So you try to open the page of project update bot, it will load forever. And there's already more than 400 issues that were committed out of that. Uh, this now opens merge requests, as well as it posts the patch for review. And it also, a new thing, if you know this, and uh, there's a new thing, is that it posts the post director results from upgrade status. So it posts what it could fix, and it also posts what it could not fix. And there you can review like what else needs fixing by humans. So it automates all the things that's possible by robots and leaves the rest to humans. And Drupal 10.3 already defined these deprecated APIs, other than what's, re what's actually uh, in the, uh, de uh, dependencies and deprecated modules. So uh, you can start using this now. So you upgrade to Drupal 11 by updating to PHP 8.3 now because that's the only thing that makes sense. Like you wouldn't leave that money on the table. And uh, then start updating projects to Drupal 11 compatibility, which you can do inside Drupal 10. So you can get compatible inside Drupal 10 on your live environment without uh, upgrading to Drupal 11, so you can schedule this when you have downtime, you don't have client work, or some other stuff. We have a dashboard of how ready the ecosystem is, so that to answer a question here uh, is when this will be useful. So we have a dashboard of how ready the ecosystem is on dev.aqua.com, and so we can see that 15% of projects are already in some state of ready, so either in dev or um, RC, beta, et cetera, and 7% almost are stable for Drupal 11, it's not bad. And uh, more than half of them, 54%, are only need an info file change. So super simple to update. Then uh, we track which issues we find. The project update bot can fix the info issues and the rector cover Drupal issues. So it's more than 70% of the problems that we are finding across all of the ecosystem we can automate fixing. So these 6,000 issues the bot posted, they are covering 70% of all the issues uh, for Drupal 11 compatibility, so yeah. Um, so, but there's gonna be modules that will not update to Drupal 11 on time, so what happens to them? So we formed a group of humans recently, that's the Project Update Working Group, which will be able to intervene with contributed projects. They have a very strict set of rules but if a contributed project is lagging behind, they are dragging their feet, they don't want to update to this new major version, the maintainer is not available anymore, blah, blah, blah. They have a process that's very well written and very strictly um, uh, described of how they can gain maintainer access temporarily to the project, update it to Drupal 11, and then move on, and then leave, leave it there. So they are not taking over projects, just for, they are taking them over just for the sake of upgrading them to the new major version and then move on, they don't maintain those projects but they are there to like angels to save the day, I guess. It's great. Uh, and for those projects that may not have got that, tre got, uh, got that treatment, or uh, you just want to try it out earlier, there's the Composer uh, Drupal Lenient plugin, the Drupal Lenient Composer plugin, 
which allows you to compose or require extensions that are not compatible with your major version. And then there's the Composer Patches project, which allows you to then apply patches on top of them to fix their incompatibility. So in your local environment, you can try them out on Drupal 11. And then Drupal 12 will be even easier than this to get to. So the last week, so I don't know how many of you are aware of GitLab CI on Drupal.org? All right, not many of you. So GitLab CI is a new system on Drupal.org, which is an industry standard kind of, a lot of other projects use GitLab and their uh, system. And GitLab CI is very extensible and allows us to put new kinds of capabilities into it, which our previous system was not well suited for. And so last week I worked with Fran at the DA to build capabilities uh, within this uh, GitLab CI templates to support Drupal 12 readiness now. Well, we haven't even released Drupal 11. And the way we do that is we put in an uh, optional job into the GitLab CI templates, which then will alert you about your existing incompatibilities. So here I have the POTX module is the translation template extractor. It tells me that Drupal loading, module load include is deprecated in 9.4 and will be removed in 11 and I need to fix it. So this just runs on my project. And you can also integrate this into your um, issue queue when people suggest new changes and this is how that looks like. So when a merge request comes in for your project, then this also runs and it tells you that this is not compatible with the next major version of Drupal. And it's in line with the merge request review process. So this is available as a tested thing right now. We have sample custom implementation in the upgrade director queue and as an issue to add globally as a template option to all of the Drupal CI templates. And that would allow all projects in Drupal.org to be forwards compatible with Drupal 12 with the next major version and any change that's added to their code would be forwards compatible with the next major version. So that means that when project update bug comes around in two years, it will like be, a, be like a ghost town because there's not gonna be issues to fix because uh, people will be aware of those problems much earlier with these automated tools. So we are automating even more of this and even earlier. So that's why Drupal 12 will be even easier and even more exciting. So in summary, uh, Drupal 11 will be the week of July 29. It's still interesting because Starshot is built on that and we hope to build the infrastructure of Starshot into Drupal core and that Drupal core will, core will become this, the driver of Starshot. Uh, you should make your core PHP 8.3 compatible now and upgrade to PHP 8.3 on your sites because it's just the thing that makes sense. Uh, and the 10.3 defined all the deprecations so you can start using upgrade status and Drupal Rector now to find the issues and fix the issues. We have uh, meetings every other Monday in the D11 readiness Slack channel. So there's drupal.org slash Slack if you've not used it before. And I have stickers and seven minutes for questions. <laughs> yes. So the question was the subsystems in Drupal 10 and 11 are really good. Do I foresee any major subsystem changes in Drupal 12? Uh, so I think we, we just had the recipes system committed which is a bunch of new APIs. So that's gonna be really interesting on how people will build on top of, um, top of that. It's, like, it's not just recipes, so it, it relies on like config actions and a bunch of other APIs that could themselves be really interesting for building future things. Uh, we've also, yeah, feel free. We're also working on on um, new things around like using simple single directory components with the experience builder. So that will definitely um, grow a lot more underlying things for Drupal subsystem. So those are the things that I foresee. But there's, I mean, single directory components that I haven't foreseen two years ago. So there could be new exciting things that we have no idea about right now. Yes. So how do you ensure that Symphony doesn't reach end of life again in your plans of Drupal? So how do we ensure that Symphony doesn't reach end of life too soon again? So what's great about Symphony is that they publish their end of life plans very publicly and they, are, they stick to it. So we know when they're gonna be end of life. So that's how we know how long we can support Drupal 10. 
Some of the other projects are not as transparent. So we've had like very direct conversations with the jQuery team, for example, and they have a much harder time to commit to certain years of support. So they are like, maybe it feels like it's possible, but we don't know. Um, so not every project is like that. Um, it's, always, it's always a balance between what do we do there to, um, to support them. Um, so we try to, try to be very open about what, Drupal, what it would be great for Drupal, and at the same time try to get, um, try to like be conscious about they are also an open source project that people rely on so much. There was this image from XKCD in the keynote about the Nebraska open source project that you kick out and everything falls apart. So there's some of those projects that are, that are hard, yeah. Yes? Any suggestions for book replacement? So the good news about the things that we are removing from core, they are not going away. We are not deleting them. We are moving them to contributed projects. So the book module, when we removed from core, it was a requirement that immediately become available in contrib with the same code that we removed from core. So it's not going away. You can use the contrib module from, uh, from there. And they are also required to maintain that branch of the contrib module to be stable. And then they can open new branches of the country module with exciting new things and integrate with AI and like do whatever they want. Um, but they would maintain the same uh, branch with, um, with compatibility that was in core. And so the statistics plans that I've said, they have this country module that they will maintain and they have a new branch that is like this new privacy conscious approach to statistics. It's really exciting, I think. Yes. how involved I am with the timelines for Drupal releases and whether I'm optimistic about the end of July release timeline. So the beginning of the year, it felt like it will be very hard to get it done in July, uh, but it's always hard to predict when you have like updates like PHP Unit 10, which like requires some re-architecture in how Drupal integrates with the testing system and uh, when it's ready, like when people get inspired to build up these new things. So that was hard to predict, but now that's done, so that was the main thing that was missing from Drupal 11. So it's, I'm very confident that we will be able to release at the end of July. I asked uh, release manager Nathaniel Catchpoll earlier today how confident he is, and he said that it's pretty sure that this is gonna happen, and it's only a matter of what level of quality we can put in the release notes and the other supporting material to support the community to get on it. So that's the thing that you can still help with, but the code is there, it works. So I'm confident that it happens. What my feeling is about the timeline, I'm really excited that we can release it in July because we can start building new things for December, so we don't need to fiddle in with releasing Drupal 11 itself this year. We released it and we can move on to the shiny things. And also, um, what else I wanted to say about that? Yeah, so we can move on, and, and, and also, like, it, uh, yeah, it, make, it gives us a feeling of accomplishment that we can move on here, and we are, we are done with this. Yeah, I think it's exciting. Yeah, so I mentioned the command to just run Drupal with only PHP, and that's called quick start, quick dash start. So you Google for Drupal quick start command or something like that, it will probably find it. It's a PHP script in Drupal core, core slash script slash Drupal, which, uh, which takes the quick start argument and then you can run it. That's also what supports the uh, theme generator. So it has the generate theme command that allows you to generate themes out of template themes and generate your custom themes out of them. So that's also there. So some of these Command line tools are built into Drupal core. Uh, we'll see how we'll do that in Starshot with Drush and other components. Yes? Can you link to your slides back up there again or are you locked? Yeah, I, I'm not locked out. It was just a bit confusing, but I will put an, I mean, let me make that public as well right now. Well, I will put up the, put up the link first. Yeah, any other questions? Yes? Is there a difference between recipes and install profiles? Yes. So recipes, 
So install profiles are locking you into a certain thing. So you install with the install profile, it's gonna be a component of Drupal that will always be there. So I'm trying to like un unhide this in the meantime. So that will always be there. Um, if you installed with an install profile, there's not really a way out of the install profile anymore. And that's been a problem with several distributions where they, the maintainers didn't want to maintain them anymore, but people were on them. Um, and the recipes, they don't lock you in. So recipes are automated side building steps. So recipes are basically like do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. And you run it, it's like a robot that does all the steps. And then it's just like if you did, did it manually, it doesn't lock you in because it just does all the things and then you have your site. It says if nothing ran, you don't need to have recipes in your live environment. It just runs and then you deploy it, the results. So um, it's much, it's liberating from install profiles because you're not logged in. And they're also combinable, unlike install profiles, so you can't combine multiple install profiles and do, and do it, it's not possible to do. And you can also inherit recipes, so a recipe can depend on other recipes, which was also not possible with install profiles. There was a lot of work that we were trying to make install profiles inheritable, it didn't happen. So all of those things were not possible with install profiles, they are now possible with recipes. And they're all, they are, components that you can use and install and not, log, not get logged in and it's fantastic. I think it's great. Any other questions? Yes. Is your, so the question was, what's my recommendation for a Leo builder? Because there was a bug with Leo builder and translations. Is that a bug in, it, it's a specific 10.3 bug or it's a previous, it's a bug from a previous version? If the bug is fixed, if that bug is fixed by 10.3, then yeah, sure, update to 10.3. It's not yet available though, so it's gonna be, it's gonna be, uh, I think, I don't have the timeline ahead of me, but I think it's June something when we release 10.3. It's next month, so it's not too far. Uh, but if that's fixed, yeah, absolutely up update to it, yes. If you are on 10.0, that's already end of life. If you're on 10.1, that will be end of life when 10.3 becomes available. So you will need to update if you want support anyway, yes. So the, you're saying that I said that it's best to get up to 10.3 before getting to 11. You will be required to get on 10.3 before you get to 11 because 10.3 is the only version of Drupal that has the, all the APIs ready and the deprecations are there so the checking tools can find if your code is compatible. There, that's where, that's the only version that has the upgrade path or it's still available in 11. So all of the upgrade path before 10.3 have been removed from Drupal 11 to make it easier to test and make it easier to maintain the upgrade. And so we removed the upgrade paths from versions that are not supported already or will not be supported soon from Drupal 11. So that's why you need to upgrade to 10.3 first. Sure, anything else? All right, if not, then thank you. And I will make this uh, open source right now as promised.